the, the sales pitch for, for, for going to Mars is that um, it's going to be a cramped, dangerous, difficult, uh, very hard work. Uh, you might die. Um, and um, that's the sales pitch. I hope you like it. <laughs> so far from being <laughs> some sort of escape hatch, <laughs> it will be extremely difficult and dangerous and, and tough. Um, Mars, Mars is a fixer-upper of a planet. And um, so it's, it's going to take some work to make it, make it easy to live there. But one day we could make Mars a planet like Earth, and I think we should. But the, the critical threshold, I think, for Mars is to uh, have a city that is self-sustaining. Um, it's going to be incredibly difficult to make a self-sustaining city, because if it's missing any ingredient, any ingredient at all, um, however minor that ingredient is, then if the ships from Earth stop coming for any reason, uh, the city will die out. Starship is capable of doing that. It's capable of, of, of getting, getting a million tons to the surface of Mars and creating a self-sustaining city. Um, and I think we should try to do that as soon as we can. Um, the window of opportunity may be open for a long time, and I hope it is. But it, it may also be open for a short time. And this is, the first, this is the first point in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it has been possible. So the, and we're aiming for uh, rapid reusability, uh, which is why the, the booster is, is going to take off and then fly back to the launch tower and uh, aspirationally uh, get uh, land on the arms. If it does come in too fast um, and, um, and shear off the arms, then I guess it will be a farewell to arms. <laughs> uh, the, there'll be more ships than there are boosters, because the, the booster actually, even though it's gigantic, uh, will come back in about six minutes. The, the, the ship uh, has to complete at least one orbit around Earth, and sometimes uh, maybe three orbits or, or more. Uh, and each orbit is 90 minutes. So the ship uh, is probably you know, e reusable about every uh, six, six to eight hours. That's, uh, that's why we say sort of three times a day for the ship. But in theory, the, the booster is capable of being uh, reused every hour. Um, so the, the, the propellant pumps are designed to fill the rocket in uh, about half an hour. So the, this really is designed for rapid reusability. Just some facts about Starship. And th these, these numbers will evolve over time. Um, so uh, the height of the ship is about 50 meters, 164 feet. Uh, the 9 meter or 30 foot uh, diameter. Well, you can just see it, basically. Um, <laughs> um, it's got about 1,200 tons of, of propellant on the, the ship. And uh, thrust is about 1,500 tons. Um, now, these numbers will. Yeah, we'll probably add more propellant over time, increase thrust. Um, diameter will, will stay the same. It's a huge, huge pain to change diameter. <laughs> so that, that'll tend to stay the same, but it'll probably get a little bit longer. And uh, we're expecting payload capacity of uh, 100 to 150 tons, depending on, on which orbit. Um, so to, uh, to a Starlink orbit, uh, it, roughly 100 tons. Uh, heat shield. <laughs> so this is the world's largest heat shield. Um, and uh, this is, uh, we actually make this at, uh, at a little factory in, in Florida near Cape Canaveral. Uh, we call it the bakery. And uh, we're actually using a lot of techniques that are uh, used for roofing tiles. So we, we need to have a heat shield that uh, is capable of resisting extreme heat, but also is not uh, crazy expensive. And um, our heat shield team has done, done amazing work in creating uh, the world's largest uh, heat shield and one that is uh, reusable. Uh, but also uh, robust and uh, low cost. So uh, it's, not a, it's not a crazy money heat shield. Th that's one of the technologies that is necessary for um, getting to Mars. So uh, the ship would get to orbit with, with its payload. And then in orbit, we'd re refill the tanks so it would have enough propellant uh, to, to get to Mars. Mars is far. So let's see, super, the super heavy booster. So it, it was 70 meters. Um, 
but then uh, there was an extra half barrel section that the team deleted, and totally accidentally, it's 69 meters. <laughs> it's also booster four and ship 20. I mean, this is a pure coincidence. I, those w numbers won't leave me alone. I, it was just, um, I hope it's good luck. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> so propellant capacity is like around 3,400 tons. I think it, this, like so these these, it'll probably uh, it, it will increase over time. Probably get to 36, maybe 3,800 tons. Um, thrust is around 7,600 tons. Uh, that'll probably increase too over time. Um, just to put this into perspective, though, the Saturn V was uh, seven and a half million pounds of thrust, and um, Starship is 17. So it's more than twice the thrust of a Saturn V, which was quite, that was, that's the largest rocket ever to get to orbit. Um, it's worth noting Super Heavy is, is the, the largest flying object of any kind, or will be. <laughs> the next booster, uh, we actually increased the engine count to 33. We've kind of bounced around on engine count. Um, but because um, I think at one point we had like 37 engines and uh, <laughs> they went to 29. Uh, we finally settled on, on th 33 engines, which, which is about actually the most number of engines you can actually fit under that, that booster without like expanding the diameter. Uh, this, this tower from, from design to construction was uh, 13 months. So it's quite an, quite an epic structure. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's really worth emphasizing that the, the whole launch system, which is basically stage zero, uh, is... Um, I'd say as complex and difficult as either the booster or the ship. So I, I really want to emphasize that this is uh, and it's, it's a very difficult thing that requires a lot of hardcore engineering. And uh, it's really, um, like I said, the, the, the tower and the launch system, which I call stage zero, is just as important as stage one and stage two. I mean, this is really some, some wild stuff here. In fact, I mean, hard to believe it's real, except, you know, <laughs> it's right there. So and then Raptor development. Uh, Raptor 1 was 185 tons of thrust. Uh, Raptor 2 is 230 tons of thrust. And I think over time, uh, we can get that to probably 250 tons. Um, so that's, uh, and it's also, um, significantly simplified. So you can see the difference between uh, V1 and V2. So it's, it actually, um, Raptor 2 costs about half as much as Raptor 1, despite having much more thrust. Uh, and I think just generally being um, a, a much easier engine to build uh, and a more robust engine. So um, very excited about Raptor version 2, and it's, it's only going to get better from here. Yeah, so Raptor 2 is pr pretty sick. Um, we have some upcoming uh, uh, Starship missions. Uh, orbital flight is really just the beginning. Uh, so we, we're, we're going to have um, a number of Starlink uh, missions uh, that will launch uh, Starlink Satellite Version 2. Um, but uh, even more exciting than that is the, the NASA uh, human space flight mission. Um, we're incredibly honored to that, that, that NASA has selected uh, Starship to uh, take astronauts back to the moon for the first time in, in half a century, which is kind of mind-blowing. So, um, I'd just like to say, like, we're, we're, SpaceX is just d deeply honored and appreciative that, that NASA would, would uh, uh, choose us for, for this uh, incredibly important mission, and um, we'll get it done. Um, and then th there's also uh, the Dear Moon mission, which is uh, um, uh, going to take um, artists around the moon. And um, that's uh, Isaku Miyazawa. And he, he's uh, going to select, uh, I think, a dozen artists and, um, and, and do a loop around the moon, which will be very exciting. 
and there's going to be some uh, future announcements that I think people will be pretty fired up about. So um, anyway, super exciting future ahead with uh, this. Uh, there'll probably be a few bumps in the road, you know, but uh, we want to iron those out with uh, satellite missions and test missions and, and, uh, and get to a high flight rate and, and then ha have something that's extremely reliable uh, for, for human spaceflight.